Hi, and welcome to AP Macroeconomics. This is Ms. Haya Gamo, and I will be teaching you this course. So why take AP Macroeconomics? You get to have the opportunity to earn college credit based on your AP score. You get to demonstrate to college admission officers that you have a greater potential for academic success in college than non-AP students. We introduce to you the principles that apply to an economic system as a whole in macroeconomics. You get to study all about national income and price level determination. You develop your familiarity with economic performance measures, the financial sector, stabilization policies, economic growth, and international economics. And of course, you learn to use graphs, charts, and data to analyze, describe, and explain economic concepts. Throughout this course, you will develop certain AP economic skills. There are four categories. The first one is principles and models, where you would define economic principles and models. You would describe, identify these economic principles, concepts, and models also using quantitative data or calculations, and you would describe similarities, differences, and limitations of these economic concepts, principles, and models. The second one would be interpretation, where you would explain the given economic outcomes using economic concepts, principles, and models. And you would also explain them um, where contributing variables uh, occur, also interpret them using quantitative data or calculations. The third one would be manipulation, where you would determine outcomes of specific economic situation using economic concepts, principles, and models, and also determine the effects of one or more changes on other economic markets, and determine the effects of a change in an economic situation using also quantitative data or calculations. And last but not least would be graphing and visuals, where you would draw accurately labeled graph or visuals to represent an economic model or market, demonstrating your understanding of a specific economic situation on an accurately labeled graph or visual. So you would demonstrate the effect of a change in an economic situation on an accurately labeled graph or visual. We cover six units in macroeconomics. The first one is basic economic concepts that starts with scarcity, opportunity costs and production possibilities curve, which is graphing, comparative advantage and gains from trade, and the terms of trade, of course. We will learn about demand and supply, which are very basic in economics and how to graph them, market equilibrium and disequilibrium for demand and supply, and then we'll move to concepts that are more macroeconomics based. So in unit two, we have economic indicators and the business cycle. So we'll learn about the circular flow and gross domestic product. In circular flow, we'll also take the extended circular flow. We'll learn about the GDP, how to calculate it, and the limitations of GDP. We'll learn about unemployment and how to calculate it. We'll learn about different price indices and inflation and how to calculate inflation, the costs of inflation as well to differentiate between real and nominal GDP and how to calculate each, and we'll learn about the phases of the business cycle. In Unit 3, we move into national income and price determination. We start with aggregate demand. The multipliers are different types and how to calculate each. And then we will move to the other part of the the model that we are building, which is the aggregate supply. And we have two types, the short-run aggregate supply and the long-run aggregate supply. And then we'll put the aggregate demand and aggregate supply together, and we'll get the equilibrium, and we'll learn about changes in the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model in the short run, and the long run self-adjustment, and induced changes through fiscal policy. And we will have also the last topic, which is automatic stabilizers. The fourth unit is financial sector. In financial sector, we start with financial assets and different types of financial assets. We will also introduce interest rates, nominal versus real, 
and how to calculate each. And then we'll move to money, its definition, measurements and functions of money. And then it's all about banking, the expansion of the money supply and how fractional banking works. And then we'll move to the money market and monetary policy, which is another induced type of policy in addition to the fiscal policy. And then we'll end with the loanable funds market and how to model it. In unit five, we will see it's called long run consequences of stabilization policies. So it's a continuation of unit four, where we put the fiscal and monetary policy together and we will see the consequences of the actions of these policies in the short run. We will model these policies. We will introduce a new graph, which is the Phillips curve, which represents inflation and unemployment. We'll learn about money growth and inflation. And we will see what it means to have government deficits and differentiate that from national debt and the consequences of that. And we'll have examples from different countries. We'll learn what does it mean crowding out and what does it mean economic growth, um, its indicators and its factors, what can fuel economic growth. And we'll end it with public policy uh, that is needed for economic growth. The last unit is open economy, international trade and finance. Um, we'll start with the balance of payments the types of accounts and balance of payments for every country that has a balance of payments and how it is prepared. The exchange rates, which many students find very interesting. So the forex market, the foreign exchange market, uh, we will be graphing it. And the changes um, in the foreign exchange market, the effects of the changes in economic conditions in the foreign exchange market. And we'll end with the changes in the uh, foreign exchange market and net exports, and then the real interest rates and international capital flows. So as you can see, all very interesting topics. When it comes to resources, we will have our main textbook, which is uh, the Macroeconomic Textbook by AMSCO, which is very much based on the AP course curriculum. And then we have the PDF version of the Princeton Review, IP Economics, which includes macro and micro. And on a daily basis, we'll be using AP Classroom for macroeconomics. There is also AP Central by College Board and other um, AP endorsed websites. There is the YouTube channel by Advanced Placement and there's other um, websites and resources that I find useful to be sharing them with you. How AP exams are scored? While the MCQ questions are scored by machine, the free response questions are scored by thousands of college faculty and expert AP teachers. Now, scores on the free response questions and performance assessments are weighted and combined with the results of the computer scored MCQs. And this row score is converted into a composite AP score on a one to five scale. AP exams, however, are not norm reference or graded on a curve. Instead, they are criterion reference, which means that every student who meets the criteria for an AP score of 2, 3, 4, or 5 will receive that score no matter how many students that is. Using and interpreting AP scores, the scores on the AP ranges from 1 to 5, one being the lowest and five the highest. Five is interpreted as a solid A, extremely well qualified. Four is well qualified based on a um, range from A minus to B. And that is based on whether it's a high four or a low four. Three is qualified, which ranges from B minus to C. Two is possibly qualified and one is not recommended. When it comes to college credit, some colleges accept a three, most colleges would require a four or a five. Your AP score is a weighted average of the two sections, the multiple choice and the free response section. The multiple choice has 60 MCQs, each one gets one point, 
and they're added together, whereby the free response questions has three questions. The first one has a higher weight than the other two, and the three are added together, and the weighted average of the two would be the composite score that would be a range up to a 90. And as you can see here, um, the scores would range from a 0 to a 90. That would give you your AP score from 1 to 5. Now, this range varies slightly from one year to the next, but this is sort of like an example that gives you, on average, what you need to get in order to get um, to achieve a 4 out of 5. The exam date for the AP Macroeconomics exam is Friday, May 10th, 2024. The exam format is composed of two sections. First, we have the multiple choice section, which composed of 60 questions, one hour and 10 minutes to answer them, so that's 70 minutes, and it's 66% of your exam score. The questions would require you to use economics content knowledge and reasoning across the range of course topics and skills that we discussed in skill categories one, two, and three. The second section would be the free response section that includes three questions. You have one hour to answer them, which includes 10 minute reading time. It comprises 33% of your exam score. It starts with one long free response question, and that's 50% of your score, and follows with two short free response questions, each worth 25% of your score. In these questions, you are asked to make assertions about the economic concepts, principles, and models that we learned, and you're asked to explain these concepts, principles, and models, and outcomes and effects. You're also asked to make some calculations, i.e. numerical analysis, and most importantly, you're asked to create graphs or visual representations. Thank you, and I am very much looking forward for our journey together and a successful academic year.